Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys an updated guide on how to set up OBS, basically from start to finish, on how to record games or screencasts or basically anything else you have going on. So to do a complete setup here, I'm going to get started by uh, going over the scenes in the bottom left hand corner. And this is for version 20.1.1, which is the newest version as of the end of October. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, add that in. So new source. You can call it game, you can call it whatever game you're playing, doesn't really matter. And when you add a new scene, that's basically going to contain a set of different sources. The sources are where you're getting all of your audio-visual information from, such as uh, the graphics from the game, or it could be an image overlay, uh, especially if you're into Twitch streaming and that kind of thing. Um, and all of these different sources are added either with the plus button down here, or by right-clicking and going to Add. So you can see you can add in extra input captures, which would be like a microphone, but not necessary because over here in the mixer, there's already uh, defaults for microphone, which you can see I currently have set up. Uh, desktop audio is going to be where uh, the, the sounds that are coming out of your speakers, that's what desktop audio is. So if you want to record the sounds of your game, you might want to enable that. And um, if your game is particularly loud and you want the mic to be louder than that, you should probably tone down the decibels to lower the decibel rating, the uh, quieter the sound's going to be. So back to the different sources you can add. Um, let's see, important ones, images, once again if you want to overlay. But uh, the ones we really want to focus on here are game capture and window capture. So either of these can work. Um, as you probably guessed, Games like this one here, Crawl, are running in a window, so you can add a window source to capture that. Uh, but there's also game captures when you specifically want to capture uh, full screen applications like games um, when they open up. So let's do window capture first. So create a new window capture, you can name it, so I guess I'll name it Crawl. And What's going to happen is it's going to pop up with one of your default windows that are compatible with this. Not every game can use um, window capture, but Crawl seems to be supported here. So you can select the window, which is going to be your game. Go ahead, hit OK. And um, yeah, just note certain things. Like in this case, um, and I don't know exactly how it would interact with uh, game capture, but. Oh, okay, okay. No, never mind. Sorry. It's working fine. It's just that crawl apparently pauses when you all tab out. So, learning new things every day. But, uh, yep, seems to capture it just fine when it all tabs in, all tabs out. It's just that it's paused. So, window capture would work fine here. But if for some reason you're having issues with getting window capture to work, you can instead add a display capture. And just, oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> display capture is for your entire desktop. I meant, um, I mean game capture. So game capture, you can add a crawl here. Now by default it captures any full screen application, which generally would mean a game in full screen mode, but obviously you can see here I have this in windowed mode. This game does have full screen mode, but if you're not running in full screen mode, then you're going to want to click on this drop down here and capture a specific window instead. And uh, you can see here that uh, different windows that weren't available in window uh, source are actually up here. So hopefully your game's on that list. You go ahead, select that. You can choose if you want to capture the cursor inside the game, uh, which defaults there. Most of this other stuff you don't really need to worry about too much. So I'm going to hit OK. And yep. Uh, you might have to alt tab into the game, as you saw I have to do there, for it to show up the first time. So just make sure that it's actually receiving the uh, audio video information before you start recording. But anyway, uh, because I have the resolution set in the game lower than my desktop, the game is currently set to 720p resolution. What I need to do in this case is to scale the source up. So what's actually going to be in the video output is everything in these four corners, all this black information, everything in there, all the images I capture, if you have a webcam, that kind of thing too. Um, so if I want this to be full screen, which you usually do, you click on one of the corners, or you click on the source, and then you click on a corner, and you drag it, it automatically snaps to the full recording. Um, and then by doing that, it's going to cover the full screen. So that's really important there. 
So especially if you're recording games, a lot of people like to add in their webcam. So I'm going to do that here. If you click the Add Sources button, go to Video Capture Device, Create New, hit OK. Um, and let's see. So from this device list, you're going to have access to all of your plugged in video devices, aka webcams in most cases. Um, so you would select yours from the list. Uh, you can leave resolution FPS type as default, or you can go custom and kind of type in your own resolution, whatever is supported here. Um, but in most cases, you can probably leave it as default. When you hit OK here, you can kind of scale it, put it in whichever corner you need it in. So once you have your webcam added, if you want to also filter out the background, you would right click any video capture device, go to filters. Click the plus sign next to effect filters, and you want to add in chroma key. So chroma key is going to work here as you basically select a color on your screen, or you can use one of the defaults if you like have a green screen, which is ideal. And you select the color you're going to want to pick. Um, I think there might have been like a dropper or something that you can click on the screen there. Oh uh, yeah, pick screen color. Okay, there we go. So now I can just select that and it's kind of getting this whitish blue in my background. Hit OK. And obviously it's not going to work very well there. So the reason for that is that I don't really have a good background color in order to do the chroma key properly. You would have to have like a green screen or something behind you, basically a color that doesn't show up on your skin and then you filter out the background because your background is one color. Um, usually it's green over here. Um, but yeah, as you can see, blue will filter out most of the color, so blue is not a good color. Magenta, not a very good color. Usually people use green screens for that. Um, but that's how you add in chroma key if you were looking for that. So moving on, um, let's see here. Okay, so we have video capture device, the, the game itself, and now we want to probably customize the microphone settings. So over here, mic slash aux, especially if you don't see uh, sound volumes as you're just talking at your computer, you're going to want to click on the settings icon and go to properties. And here you select the microphone that you want to use from your computer. It'll default to default, of course, which is going to be whatever you have set up in Windows. Um, but yeah, make sure you have the right microphone enabled, turn on everything. You should be getting sound volumes here. You want to make sure that it's somewhere kind of in the middle, that it doesn't actually go all the way up here and get distorted. Um, once again, probably test your um, recording before you do a full video. Just make sure your audio, video, everything's fine. Um, you can choose to enable or disable your desktop audio depending on what you need. Um, so a video capture device, don't need to worry about that there. Uh, just for safe measure, I can mute it because I'm not trying to ca capture uh, audio from my video capture device. I'm trying to capture audio from my designated microphone right now. Um, so moving on, I guess we can go to settings up here now. And uh, whenever you want to customize your settings, you might want different profiles. So you can click new to create a new profile. I think I'll do that now. So I'll just create a test profile. Uh, maybe that'll reset the settings back to defaults. I'm not actually sure about that. And now we go into settings and there'll be a few things to customize here. So first off, under output, your video bit rate, um, 2500 is usually just kind of okay, but if you want to record at a higher value, um, you can increase that. So video bit rate is basically going to be how much data is going into your video um, for every X period of time, let's just say a second. Um, so the more data that you allow into your video recording, the more it can capture, the less distortions there's generally going to be, the bigger the file size is, and the better it'll look. But you don't need to go crazy on that. Um, 4,000 is probably plenty. This really matters though when you're recording, um, if you're going to be doing a live stream. Uh, so don't increase the bit rate higher than your bandwidth can support. You can go ahead and do a test uh, online uh, with one of those bandwidth testing tools to find out how good your upload is, and then don't make this higher than your upload speed. So uh, I think it's measured in kilobits per second. So if you have a max, or oh, maybe, it's, yeah, kilobits per second. So if you have a max upload that's only four kilobits, uh, sorry, four megabits per second, um, then don't make it higher than that because it'll cause your stream to lag. Make it probably 70 to 80 percent of your max uh, bandwidth at most. Um, I have another video on kind of determining your 
um, max bandwidth of what you should set your video bit rate when you're going to be streaming online on for OBS. So check my channel for that too. Um, okay, recording path. That's going to be important. So in Windows, this defaults to your user profile and then the videos folder or directory. Um, you can change that. You can tag things onto the end of it. So you could have like slash recordings. The only thing that's really important here is that you have to make sure the folder actually exists before you start uh, recording. OBS will not automatically create the folder for you. Um, or you can just leave it defaulted here. Uh, recording format, I usually change this to MP4 because a lot of video editors don't support FLV. Um, MP4 is a more universal format, so you can't really go wrong with that. Um, programs like Adobe Premiere are going to be compatible there. In audio, uh, you should be able to see here as well which microphone you're currently using, not totally necessary. Uh, video, if you want to have your, your output video in, in full resolution rather than scaled down like it is here, then you want to make sure that your scaled resolution is equal to your base canvas or recording resolution. So um, I think it does default scaling down to 720p or 1080 pixels by 720 pixels. So you can change that to whatever your max resolution is if you want to capture the max resolution. Um, just know that sites like YouTube, their videos are in 16 by 9 resolution. So that would be uh, 16 on this side for every 9 on this side. So you put it pretty simply. Um, so just kind of scrolling through the settings again, there may be extras that you need to take care of. Oh, yeah, you can make a dark theme for OBS. I don't actually know if that's defaulted or if I installed it. I think it might be defaulted now. So yeah, that's pretty cool there. Um, so let's see here. Okay, I think we're pretty much good. Just a couple more things I would add. Hotkeys, you can set start recording and end recording. I usually use something like Control-R. Um, that way, if you press those key combinations, you don't actually have to be looking at the OBS screen to start your recording. Um, just a handy thing to have. Obviously, there's lots more hotkeys here. Um, in the Stream tab, if you do want to stream to a service like YouTube Gaming or Twitch, um, you're going to want to choose your service here before you start st hit streaming. Um, the server, generally, you choose one that's closest to you. And the stream key, uh, well, for Twitch, that would be provided on your dashboard. Uh, for YouTube, I think when you do start a stream on the YouTube, it also gives you a stream key. So you just kind of copy paste those in here and it should be able to connect. If it doesn't connect successfully, it'll give you an error message. Um, anyway, you can click OK on all of that. Um, so at this point, you're going to want to do uh, start recording to test and start streaming. So start recording. Um, it's going to start recording to a file. You want to make sure that your CPU usage isn't too crazy, that it's still getting the FPS you're looking for. Um, in this case, stable 30 FPS. Uh, let's see, what else? You should see the recording timer go up. Um, it's not going to be timing live because we're just recording to a file. We're not streaming online. Um, though if we put in the Twitch stream key and the YouTube stream key, uh, then you would hit start streaming and it would actually start streaming to those services where you would actually be able to see a little preview window on their sites um, to make sure your video is coming in. Um, so yeah, uh, when you hit start streaming, I think it still also shows like a little green icon showing how good your connection to the server is, uh, what your upload bandwidth is. So hopefully that'll be stable. You'll have a green light down here for that. Uh, but really, that's all you need to do to set up OBS to record uh, a game. Um, in order to do a screencast, it would be the same process, except you just add, well, in my case, it's usually uh, just a, what do you call it, a display capture. So you just capture the full display of your screen, like I've been doing this whole video. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. So. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will hopefully see you guys in my future video content.